will not laugh. You will not cry. You will learn by the numbers. I will teach you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host, Aaron. And for today's video, we're headed to the world of Last Epoch with my new series, Aaron's Boot Camp. And what do I have for you today? Crafting 101's The Basics. This is going to be a very beginner's intro to crafting in LE. If you have never played the game, my goal is to make sure by the time you finish watching this video, you feel fairly comfortable with crafting inside of Last Epoch. Now, I get asked all the time, Aaron, there's so many games in this genre. Why should I play Last Epoch? And there are many reasons, but one reason that I always give is the crafting system is awesome. It's phenomenal. They continued to revamp it, and right now it is in an amazing place. Everything is timestamped in the description if you need to bounce around. For all you veteran players, this is just going to be a little bit of a refresher. So let's talk crafting. I am going to pull up my inventory and I'm going to hit F. That is the hotkey for your forge. And this is where you're going to actually be doing all of your modifying of your gear. OK, now inside of Last Epoch, there are five rarities, five rarities that you can modify. You have common magic. Rare, Exalted, and Unique, okay? And I just pulled up a couple examples of this. So one-handed, Amulets, Common, Magic, Rare, Exalted, and Unique. And a Unique item can only be modified if it has Legendary Potential, but that is going to be more on the Advanced video, okay? Now... On said items, in order to be able to modify it, it needs to have forging potential. Okay, forging potential. Forging potential is another way of saying crafting potential or changing potential or making the item what you want potential. And as you can see, and this always isn't the case, but the majority of the time, as you move up in rarity, so you'll see this common has 12 forging potential. The magic has 25 forging potential. The rare has 32 and the exalted has 45. So the rarer the item, the more you can change it. That's not always the case. It just normally is. OK, and as you are playing last epoch, literally just almost from the first mob you kill, you are going to be finding shards. See these over here in my stash. And there are a lot of them, hundreds and hundreds of shards. You are going to be finding glyphs. OK, that all do different things. And you are going to be finding runes. Shards, glyphs and runes. And as you are playing, it's a vacuum system. So if there's, you know, 40 shards laying around, you click on one and they all show up in your inventory. And what these are going to do is give you different ways to modify your item. And when they are in your stash, you have a little button right here that says transfer crafting items. You don't need to manually store these in your stash that maybe I was doing a few years ago. These are auto sorted for you. So you click on one, they vacuum all up. When they are in your stash, you push this button like I am going to do now. And they are gone and it shows right here that they were sent to the forge and they are all sorted and ready for me to use. OK, so so far, pretty simple. Five different rarities that you can craft on. Each rarity has forging potential and your shards or whatever runes or glyphs you pick up, you need to transfer in. OK, are you with me so far? So now let's talk about what you can actually do and change on an item. I'm going to take this axe right here, shift right click, and it transfers into our forge where you just take it and drag it over. Now we're going to go through all the runes and we are going to go through all the glyphs. Again, you are going to find these all the time. And once you finish the campaign or you go into the monolith, you're going to have a huge stockpile of them. Starting with runes, we're going to go through them one by one. Rune of Shattering. You're going to use this all the time and anytime a vendor has it available, always purchase them. OK, what this is going to do is it's going to break down an item and you have a chance to gather some of the shards that are on said item. All right. You then have a Rune of Refinement. Let's say you are done crafting your item and you still have forging potential. 
you can re-roll all the values on that item to try and get greater rolls. You then have a rune of removal. Let's say there's a couple affixes you don't like on an item or one affix you don't like on an item. You can try and get lucky and pull said affix off. Again, if you have forging potential. You have a rune of discovery. Adds one random tier one affix to all empty affix slots on an item. And on here, since we have currently no affixes, I'm just going to show this really quick. Rune of Discovery, put it in, add four random tier one affixes, click. All right. And now I've got four. Now this item went from common to rare because it has four different affixes on it. Okay. You then have a Rune of Shaping. This rerolls the in implicit modifiers on said item all right and the implicit modifier is the top modifier so on here it would be plus 23 melee physical damage that can roll basically only 23 so there'd never be a reason to re-roll that okay it re-rolls the top implicit on it and the last two you have rune of ascendance changes an item into a unique and then you have kind of the biggest and best crafting material right here, Rune of Creation. This would be like a PoE mirror. Duplicates the item, but reduces forging potential of both to zero. So if you have like a godlike item, an amazing item, and it still has forging potential, you can create two of them, which is awesome in this game because you're going to use those exalted items that'll be in the advanced video for creating legendaries or maybe you're dual wielding well you can have the exact same item twice on said character so these are the different runes and again you're gonna be finding them all the time you can see in here 1300 1200 1100 and i'm crafting all the time now moving over to the glyphs and you can use runes and glyphs at the same time glyph of hope your number one kind of crafting agent. And this is a 25% chance to use no, no forging potential. Pretty much all the time when you are crafting, you're gonna just keep this in here because it gives you a one in four of this number not going down. We're gonna do a bunch of crafting. So don't worry, you're gonna see how this all works, okay? So you got your Glyph of Hope. You've got your Glyph of Chaos, and what this is going to do is it's going to change a random affix. So let's say I hate Health on Kill. I don't want that on there. We can go to Upgrade it, put in a Glyph of Chaos, and we're just going to get a random now suffix. And now it's Increased Stun Chance. So basically you can re-roll and Chaos an item. Okay. Two more. You have a Glyph of Order. If you're upgrading a modifier and it has a perfect roll or a high roll, you can use this glyph to ensure that it does not re-roll the affix as it levels up. And last but not least, you have a glyph of despair. This gives you a chance to seal an affix and actually have five affixes on an item. So for example, if I really like critical or critical strike modifier, if I want to keep this on there or potentially get rid of it, I can click on it. Use Glyph of Despair, and now upgrade Affix, and it sealed it and brought it right down here so that now I can put on a different modifier. So now when you look at this item, it is out of forging potential, and there is no way to increase forging potential. There's no special crafting recipe, there's no quest, there's no vendor, there's no rune, there's no shard, there's no Glyph. There is no way to bring this from zero. So this item in its current state is how it's going to be forever. OK, but this shows you that you can have five affixes on an item if you seal one. OK, but majority of the time you are going to have four. Right. So those are the runes. Those are the glyphs. All right. And just as a quick example, since I would never use this item, we are going to shatter it to try and regain some of these affixes back, some of these shards back. And it shows you right there we, we got three. So those went back into our shards, which is all of these materials here that I have gained. Okay, 
So you now know the rarities. You now know forging potential. You know how to transfer them into your crafting through that button. And you got to see some basics on runes and glyphs and shattering and sealing. All right. So now I'm going to gather some items and we're going to do some crafting and I'm going to take it really slow because I feel like just watching me craft, you're going to get a very good idea and I'm going to go slow about how to do it. All right. I just completed a run in the monolith and I have a couple of items that we can now craft on. So let's go ahead, shift right click and move this wand into the forge. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to assess. All right, we've got 22 forging potential. What do we actually want to get out of this said wand? And this is increased cast speed, adaptive spell damage, less mana. It already rolled with a cold and a cast speed. So I think that the affixes on it right now at least the prefixes, so you can have two prefixes and two suffixes. The prefixes are good. I'm going to leave them as they are, okay? And we're just going to try and upgrade them. Now, the maximum you could craft to is tier five. So right now, this item just dropped with a three, eight, nine, eleven. So right now, there's it's tier 11. We're going to see if we can get it to tier 20 with only 22 forging potential. So we're going to change and put up Glyph of Hope. That gives us a one in four chance of using none. And we're going to start with cold damage, the most important affix and click. All right. That used one forging potential. Click again. That used 15 forging potential. Click again. And that used none. Glyph of Hope preserved it. All right. One done. Now we're going to move over to cast speed. Upgrade. Used one. Got two. So if you get a critical success, that means it adds a tier. So we're still at forging potential five and click. And we got another one. Okay, so we're having some pretty good luck right now. So now we have a tier five cold, a tier five cast speed, a tier five chance to ignite on hit and a tier four increased stun chance. But I don't want that increased stun chance. Okay, we want something different. So I'm going to click this. All right, and I'm going to chaos it. Now, using a glyph of chaos means we're going to get a random affix. We don't know what it's going to be, but it's not going to be increased stun chance. And we're going to click chance to slow on hit. OK, and that used up all of our forging potential, which means we took a tier 11 item and through crafting, we made it tier 20, five, five, five and five and on here it'll show you what we created and anybody that uses cold damage this is a decent wand you could take this into the monolith and you can actually do a lot with it especially if you're a cold build now, obviously this isn't an end game item but it's just a random rare i found on one monolith run that i just turned into tier 20. it was actually really good luck for this video we're probably not going to have the same luck with these other five items. All right, here we go. A chess piece. All right, so on armor, it is really important that you get as much life as possible. You can get base life, you can get life percent, and you can get vitality. So what we're going to do first with the suffixes, and we're, we're going to see if we could change this fire resistance into life. All right, so we're going to click it. We're going to use the Glyph of Chaos and we're going to try and re-roll this fire resistance and get life or health. Here we go. Elemental resistance. No. Try one more time and click necrotic resistance. All right. We got a tier five void resistance, tier five necrotic resistance. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to put on vitality. And we're not going to use Glyph of Chaos anymore. We're going to use Glyph of Hope. One in four chance of using no forging potential and click. Glyph of Hope worked. Click. Negative six. Click. Glyph of Hope worked. Click. Glyph of Hope worked. Click. Glyph of Hope worked. Wow, we're having really good luck. Okay. This item is now tier 17. We have 21 forging potential left. 
And this build I'm currently using, you want as much mana as possible. So we're just going to keep this mana. Okay. I'm going to click. Used one. Click. Used 17. Click. Used three. All right. Two items in a row that I randomly found in one monolith. We just turned tier 20. All right. Five, 10, 15, 20. Is this an end game item? No. Can you take this into the monolith? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Our first two tests gave us both tier 20 items. All right. Now we need to talk about exalted items, right? I wanted to do those crafts first to show you what a basic craft looks like. Now, when you are playing, you will see an item drop that is purple. That means it rolled with a tier six or tier seven affix on it. So you'll see this body armor right here has a tier seven throwing attack critical strike chance. You can re-roll the ranges of this, okay, if you wanted to, with a rune of refinement, you want to change the roll, but you cannot make it go higher or lower. Tier seven is the max, all right? And like I said, this item also rolled with health. This is the main affix you're looking for. So what we're going to start with is we're going to re-roll this poison resistance, and we're going to see if we can get life on it. Right, we're gonna go Glyph of Chaos once again, and we're gonna re roll poison, roll the dice, and see what we get. And click. All right, we got Necrotic Resistance. Okay, we're now gonna go over to Health and we're gonna level this to tier five. Click, click, click. All right, and now that took us that last one used 23 forging potential. All right, it used 23. Which means we got to get a little lucky with this last strength affix. Okay. So click. We're going to use our Glyph of Hope and see if we can get four levels with only eight left. And you'd have actually options here. You could seal this affix. And you could drop it down here and then put whatever you want. But you only have eight forging potential. So for this, or you can re-roll it with chaos. But we're just going to keep strength on this item. First click, used three, second click, gone. Item is bricked, so you can no longer modify it. Uh, there is no rune, no glyph, no nothing you can do to add forging potential. Once it's at zero, it's at zero forever. Now, just for the sake of counting, you will see five, five, three, and seven. So technically, this is another tier 20 item that we just crafted and modified, okay? We're gonna do one more. Let's take, I don't want that, this ring. We're gonna take, or this amulet. We're gonna take this amulet right here. 33 forging potential, poison, void resistance. Hmm, let's get, let's try and dump the void. Elemental, try and dump the poison. Lightning, that's fine. And we're going to put spell on it. Slammed it. Tier 20. I like hitting the button super fast. Man, we just crafted four in a row. Tier 20s. Four in a row. Okay. Now, just for the sake of showing you. Okay. Let's make this one tier five. So this, this health roll is tier five, but you could see that it rolled 15% and the range can be 15 to 18%. It's going to happen all the time. You want that health roll to be higher. You can click on Rune of Refinement. Okay. And that 15% roll is now 16. Now we want it higher. Back to 16. Back to 15. Back to 16, 18, okay? So it used up all of our forging potential, but that health roll is now maximum for the tier. There's lots you can do with this system, but as you know, this is just the basic tutorial on crafting. I think that's gonna do it. If you have any questions 
where something does not make sense to you, please put it in the comment section. I'm going to stay really close to these Aaron Bootcamp videos. And of course, also in my Discord, I answer any direct questions. So feel free to reach out. Hopefully you're entertained or at least learn something. Aaron, out.